You're listening to episode 734 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled Truth and Lies, given on the first Sunday in Lent 2020. In life, we buy into a lot of lies. As children, we get it modeled by those older than ourselves until we can do it ourselves. Commercials encourage it. Our celebrity culture is driven by it. TMZ would go out of business without it. And we'd live it. It all began with Adam and Eve. They were lied to. They were told that they could be like God and live forever if they ate of the forbidden fruit. But the lie is that they were already going to live forever. They had the fruit of the tree of life, which God told them they could have. God had set out a plan for life for them. And they were tempted by the devil, by a lie, and they gave in. You see, every time we sin, we lie to ourselves. Every time we participate or perpetrate evil, our true self gets hidden and we stop believing what God says about us. With every sin, we bind ourselves and shackle ourselves to a false truth about ourselves. We lie. Every time we sin, we seek out our own interests before God or his people. We lift ourselves up by putting others down, including God. We are tempted and we give in. We are fallen. The newspapers are proof of that. We are not who we are originally intended to be. Deep down inside, that angst that we have tells us so. And that's the bad news. But the good news, however, is much more important. Even though we have sinned, God never abandoned us. He continues to keep his promise even though we don't. And so in order to reverse the downward spiral, spiral, as St. Paul tries to explain, God became human so that humanity could finally experience true obedience and holiness. But think about that. How often do you hear of the word obedience as a virtue? It is. This is one of those lies where we are told that which is good is evil and that which is evil is good. Although Jesus was tempted by common allurements that we all struggle with, he didn't give in. He showed that the sin of Adam can be reversed, and he did just that. Through one man, Adam, we were condemned, and through another man, Jesus, we were acquitted. But that doesn't mean that every day is a picnic. We are still tempted. When was the last time you were tempted? When was the last time you gave in to that temptation? How did that tax return go? How about that time when you were driving aggressively or carelessly and cut someone off, causing a near accident? How about giving in to fear and not trusting that God loves you and will hold you up? How about focusing on every conspiracy theory that comes out, neglecting that God has a providential plan for you? How about participating and feeding in divisive speech that only has your self-interest in mind? It's getting modeled on it to us every time I watch a debate. How about the temptation to blame others and not take responsibility for our own failure? 
When was the last time we gossiped about another person or spread rumors instead of stopping them? You see, the good news has come to us and is still with us in the person of Jesus. He was tempted in every way, but did not sin. So he knows what it is that is our experience. The good news is that he is not intimidated by our sins and knows our temptations. He has conquered the temptations of this world and wants us to share in his life. He wants to be with each one of us in all our moments of temptation so that we can receive the grace and not give in. This sometimes takes divine intervention, especially when those temptations are connected to addictions. Our human frailty can't overcome them without divine assistance. But remember that to be tempted itself is not a sin. Sometimes people will come into the confessional and say they were tempted this way or that way. I'm like, well, that's welcome to humanity. You haven't sinned yet, I suppose. Tell me more. But it's to give in to that sin or that temptation when we, is when we stumble, fall, and sin. So this is why the church gives us this holy time of Lent to focus on prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Through these three marks of Lent, we can more closely follow Jesus in our own walk of life. We can reflect more deeply on those temptations in our lives and master our will to be like that of Jesus. We have recourse to Jesus' divine assistance. Be sure of this. He has called us to all to repent of our sins and to be open to his forgiveness. But be careful of that lie, that common lie that says, oh no, that sin is too big. He couldn't possibly forgive that. That is a lie. This Lent, then ponder on your own temptations and seek out the remedy the remedy, who is Jesus. Pray, fast, give alms. We need to die to ourselves and stop obsessing about the temptations that befall us. And by overcoming them, we will stop lying to ourselves and others and God. By doing so, we will be set free. May this Lent then offer you that freedom that you've been longing for. May this desert experience of 40 days and the grace of God be the catalyst to shed those things that keep us at a distance from our Lord and be able to stand up against the temptations in our lives. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bill's Podcast. Now, as the coronavirus continues to spread throughout the world, uh, our United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has given out uh, some instructions and recommendations for how to uh, respond to that in the context of Mass. And just recently, I got an, uh, an addition to that from our Office of Divine Worship, and I'll just read it. It says, Further to recent memo to all the bishops of the United States from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishop Bishops, USCCB, entitled, quote, Liturgical Celebrations and Public Health Concerns, unquote, and after consulting with the Archbishop, the Office of Divine Worship now recommends that all parishes cease the distribution of the precious blood for the time being and that the sign of peace be eliminated or done without the chance of physical contact. And so we have done that. Earlier they mentioned, uh, and it's a common tradition within our archdiocese through parishes, to hold hands during the Our Father. And uh, we've been really encouraged to stop doing that as well. So that's been implemented in our parish. And um, that is just a a simple way for us to be able to uh, reduce the potential of then coming to Mass and contracting anything, uh, cold or flu or the coronavirus. And this time of the year, it's obviously, as we see in the media, uh, something of great concern for people. And so that's what we're doing. And uh, I don't know what they're doing in your parish, but you might be cons- you know, considerate about the people around you as you uh, are at Mass and how you may be then either uh, in- you know, encouraging them to be safe and healthy or uh, being mindful that you might have to change some of your behaviors so that you can do that. 
Now, if you have any questions or comments about this or anything else, feel free to give me a, a, an email through my website, fatherbill.org, F-R-B-I-L-L dot org, or you can go to my websites or I should say my social media sites like Facebook. And on my main webpage, you can see the links to that as well. And until next time, may God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye.